بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق When you go to answer the latest call, um, do not use your right hand to clean yourself. Another thing with the hair is that the Rasmus said, do not touch your private parts with your right hand. So it could be nudges. Don't use it. You know, you use that. So here, remember that if a person is born, born, he's a left hander. The next hadith again, that we covered last week was the Rasulullah said that when you go to answer the nature's call, do not touch your private part with the right hand, do not use your right hand to clean yourself, and do not breathe in your glass against him. The Imam Bukhari sometimes repeats hadith because that's different in words from one hadith to another hadith. So he wants to put all the hadith that are on the topic that's the difference. Next hadith that we told last week is narrated by Abu Huraira. He says that when our Rasulullah will go to answer the nature's call in the field, remember it used to be the field out there because there was no restroom in Manila at that time. So I will follow Rasulullah. Okay? I will follow Rasulullah <coughs> and when Rasulullah will go, he will not look here left and right, he will just go straight. And uh, so Rasulullah once said to, to me that go and bring me some pebbles, some pebbles, some small stones so I can clean myself because there was no water in the desert. So and then Rasulullah said that do not bring uh, do not bring wrath wrath means dung uh, <coughs> and do not bring me uh, bones why? because bones are the food of jinn and wrath dung is so he said that I went there and I brought some uh, pebbles in my shirt. I, I picked them up and took my shirt. So and I went and I, I put that next to Rasulullah Sallallahu and then I left Rasulullah. So Rasulullah answered the uh, nature's call and this way Rasulullah Sallallahu used those pebbles. So I mentioned to you that the ideal thing is to wash yourself, clean yourself using water. Right? That's the ideal thing. But if you find yourself in a place where there's no running water, right? So then you can use pebbles. Now a good substitute of pebbles these days in our modern time is toilet paper. So if you find yourself in a place where you have not, no running water but toilet paper. And if you clean yourself, fine. You are clean. There's no need to go and take showers. Sometimes people go home and then they shower. Why? Because you know, know if you had cleaned yourself, mm -hmm. right, using toilet paper, that is good. That is good enough. Here the Sulaam Salam used to use pebbles. Uh, now you cannot use bones, remember. You know, uh, because the Sulaam said this is the food of James. And raw that is nudges. So something which is nudges, something that is nudges cannot make anything clean. Okay, so that is so bone one is one does that do? Done. Gobar. And another hadith sharif that we covered last week was narrated by Abdul Rahman ibn Aswad from his father. He said he had heard Abdullah ibn Abbas saying that um, 
Rasulullah went to answer the nature's call and he asked me to go and get three pebbles. Three pebbles. Okay? So, for, so I got, I could find only two. I could not find a third one anywhere. So what I did, I, I picked up and then and I brought it. Rasulullah threw it away. Rasulullah said, this is Najis. This is Phil. But Rasulullah said, took those two pebbles and then Rasulullah said, he himself in there. And then we covered that uh, the Hadith Sharif in which Abdullah ibn Abbas said that Rasulullah said when he made wudu, he cleaned his uh, wudu part once. Once. He did not clean it twice twice. So he washed his face once, his arms once, and his feet once. So then um, another hadith, Sahabi, Abdullah ibn Zayd said that Rasulullah said made wudu and he cleaned his wudu part twice twice. Okay. And then the third hadith is headed by Usman ibn Affan. Usman ibn Affan once, now this is during his khilaf. So Rasulullah sallam, and left this world, Abu Bakr left, Usman Umar had left. Usman is the Khalifa. So one day, in order to teach the Tabi'in, the next generation of people, how Rasulullah sallam used to make good, so that they can learn. So Rasulullah, uh, Usman said, bring me a bucket of water or a pot of water. It was a bucket. So he said that, you know what, uh, see me making wudu. So what he did was that he started washing his hands, his palms three times. So, uh, then he did malmala, uh, meaning uh, gargle his mouth. Then he cleaned his nose. Um, then he Washed his face three times. Okay? And then his hand till his elbow three times. Then he did masa one time. And then he washed his feet three times. And so uh, this is very important, brother and sister. He said that man the Rasulullah Hassan have said, Man a person who will make wuzu like I did, I made wudu. Now, he's quoting Rasulullah. The Rasulullah said, a person who will make wudu like I just now made. Just now. Then, thumma salla rakatain. Then that person will pray just two rakat of nafil salah. La yuhadithu fihima nafsa. In that, his attention is not anywhere here and there, but in salah, completely. For that three, four minutes that you spend in those two rakah, you are, you are concentrating in salah. Right? Allah will forgive all of your sins. Just two rakah of salah with foot, khushu and khudu, Allah is willing to forgive all, all of your sins. But the first condition is make wudu properly. So if the wudu is, is made according to the wudu of Rasulullah, then you pray two rakah of salah, Allah is willing to forgive. And here, remember all of the Sahira and Kabira. Small sin and the major sin. All of the sin would be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, so brother, this is why in every book of Hadith of Fiqh, you, 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 you see Tirmizi, Muslim, Nasai, Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, Nasai. What you see is that all the Imam, when they quoted the thousands of Hadith in the book, they put Baab or Abwaab, chapters. Before Kitab al-Salat, always put Kitab al-Wudu. Kitab al-Wudu. Why? Because Wudu is like a key for Salat. If you are not making Wudu properly, then Salat is just a waste. A waste of time. Because Salat is... You know, let me tell you something very... I might have heard this from scholars, but for some... Um, what I was that there was a person kind of a foolish person, I would say. Uh, he came to, he, he didn't used to pray Salah. So one day, uh, Alim, a scholar, went to him and said, that you know, it's very bad that you don't pray Salah. Right? Pray Salah. He said, no, I don't want to pray Salah. I said, why? He said, because I don't want to make Wudu. I don't want to make Wudu. So that that person said, okay, you know what? Pray Salah without Wudu. 
Where's the love without food? So it's that, but salah is not accepted. So don't forget about that. Just you pray salah and I'll make God to Allah, then Allah will accept. So he said, okay. But he said, promise to me that you'll keep on praying salah without food. So um, this person promised that I will keep on praying salah. I will not miss salah. I said, remember, you promised you will not miss salah? He said, yes. But remember, I'm not going to pray He said, fine. So this genius <laughs> kept on praying Salah for a <clears throat> few months and then one day he realized what a stupid thing he is doing. <laughs> he is praying Salah, so why don't they do and pray, and pray in, in, in the right way? <coughs> right? So sometimes scholars, and then he started to read the sometimes scholars have said that sometimes to call people to, to Islam, you have to use some hikmat as well. About Awliya Allah, Rahmanullah, whether they are in Egypt or in India or wherever they are, they are the, the friends of Allah. Sometimes you know, they, they use breaking mud from Bobby. I remember that in India, from uh, 200 years ago, more than that, there was a pretty big Wali of Allah, his name was Abdul Qutul Sahab Nabi. So one day, he had his contact, his, you know, his face, many people would come and do friends themselves and do it. This Hanka would be full of people. One day he thought that you know people are coming to me. I should go to people. So what is what? He said, where should I go first? Yeah, where should I go first? You know, you know what he thought? He went to the place of prostitutes. Prostitutes. Right? Now, all the prostitutes in that city were Muslim. Now, he went there with few of his disciples, Muridi. He went there and he went to their court house, to their place, you know. He knocked the door and those Muslim women, Muslim sisters who were prostitutes, they could not believe that Hazrat is here. They, so Hazrat said that, put a curtain. And then, and then he said, all of you, Sit behind the curtain. All those Muslim sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa forgive them, all of them sat down. And then Hazrat said, Hazrat Sahib and Wayne Allah said, that now listen to me. He gave them a path, a speech for more than an hour. You know, reminding about Quran, Hadith, and how Quran is and all that. He said that when that was speaking, right? On the other side of the curtain, every Muslim sister that was sitting was fine. Right? So at the end of the speech, Hazrat said that now what do you think? Are you are you ready to make Kaaba? So one of them said, Hazrat, I'm ready to make Kaaba. But I never took this profession with choice. And I, I don't think any Muslim sister will ever do this. I was forced to do it. But now I have spent so many years committing this sin. I doubt if Allah would ever forgive me. So, he said, that, leave that to me. Leave that to me. You make Tawbah, and I will make God to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. You make Tawbah from sincerity and and then he said that, you know what, Allah has said in Quran, Oh my brother, look here at this Oh my slave. Oh my bande. Allah is already calling you that you are my bande. Allah is not saying, no, no, you cannot go away from there. No, 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 you are my bande. Yes, we have committed sin. So I think, Don't lose hope upon the rahmat of Allah. Allah is for all of his no matter how much you have done. Well, that is what I need to be The only thing is that you turn to Allah. So it says that by the time Hazrat left the place of the prostitute, all those Muslim sisters had made power. And then they took bayat on the hand of Hazrat Abdul Qutul Qutul Sahib. All of them took bayat. Hazrat said, you know, like a Sudan, you should take bayat. And the Quran Allah said, in Surah Mukhaina, Ya Ibn Nabi, Kulli Azwa. Yeah, 
quelli del bambino. Per Aedo per questa la So, um, so, let us say that, that 
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم have said man tawadda the apostle who made wudu fal yastaghfir so he should should clean his nose with water by putting the water in it and then going out and whoever is and then man is tashmara fal yutir and apostle who clean himself after answering the religious call should use all numbers of stone one or three or five Right, right. So, so cleaning your nose, Kalpa is sunnah. Okay, it is not fault. Right. So, but yes, we should do it as part of as part of uh, of wudu. Yes, because remember that the previous hadith in which Rasulullah Muhammad said that when a person will do wudu like this, like my wudu, in that wudu Rasulullah said that. Did not he did he did his nose? So we have to do it like that. Yes, there are exceptions that I said. When you have no water or little water, you are the first you have to catch a flight, and you think that you know it will take time. Let me just watch for part of the bazi and inshallah. Next time I will. No, first. First part, yes. First, first so that so that that. Okay, next hadith. It says. قال إذا تبطأ الدرس هذه شريف إن ربع أبو هريرة عين رسول الله عليه وسلم إذا تبطأ أحدكم when a person made wudu فليت على في أن في ثم يأتوا means that he should put water in his nose and then blow it out and then this one thing second حكم وإذا من استجمر فليوت من الأبوسين who uses stones To clean himself after answering the religious call, he should take odd number of stones. Yeah. Now the third thing. The third thing is when the stain called a hadukum min nami fal yak kasir yadahu kabla ayat kulaha fi baduhi fa inna a hadam layadi ayna badalila. That when a person wakes up from his sleep, he should wash his hands before putting them in the water for wudu. Before, uh, because nobody knows where his hands were during sleep. Now, why is that? Because now, when you get in, in the in the morning, what do you do? How do you make wudu? You have running water. You just put the tap on, and the water starts rushing out, right? But machine, by at that time, because Sunnah Hasan, do they used to have running water? No. So how do they used to take water or keep water? They they will have a bucket, right? A bucket of water. So in the morning, right? What they will do is that they will take water out with their bare hand most of the time, right? So Rasulullah said, no, no, no. Before you do this, take a glass or something, right? Take out water and first clean your hand. So the, this is our Islam. So much emphasize, yeah, even on nazafa, nazafa, nazafa. You see? Yeah, cleanliness is is important. So no, otherwise you will be. Making the rest of the water not just maybe, and then Rasulullah gives a very beautiful reason because you know not know where your hand have have spent the night. <laughs> because when you are asleep, you know when you are asleep, you might have touched just something not just. And Ibn Hajar Abdullah has given a very good explanation. Apart from the jasad, he said, "Oh, people, remember when you learn this hadith, understand why Rasulullah said this." He said that those They said the Sahaba were living were hot, <coughs> hot places. Really, the weather was hot in Makkah. Now you see cold, and the Sunnah said that this is also the sign of, of Day of Judgment. When you see greenery around Makkah, that will be a sign of, of Day of Judgment coming. Now you see go to Makkah, you see greenery, right? But at the time of the Sunnah said them, the the weather, the climate used to be very hot. So when a person is sleeping. And he's sweating, right? And so he, while sleeping, he might be touching his body, scratching his body, and so that that the, the sweat is in is in his hand. Now he gets up in the morning, he puts his hand in the, the bucket of water. So he is making the rest of, of the water polluted. So that's what the Sunnah said. You do not know where your hand have spent the night. So first. Wash your hands by taking out water from the glass or something, right? Wash them properly, and then 
you know, put your hand in the, in the book. Brothers, sister, this is what, how much emphasis Allah Mother put on the Nadaf. May Allah make this Ummah understand this because in all Muslim countries, <laughs> when you go there, uh, right from throwing garbage to everything, you know, <laughs> I was reading about this. Somebody told, somebody told me I read something about an American lady who became Muslim. And uh, she said that uh, after she became Muslim, she had a first meal. Somebody told her that you should be using your hand, uh, not fork and knife. So she said, okay. So when she used her hand, she remarked, she, she said that for the first time, uh, I feel um, satisfied and content after eating. But I touched the food with my hand, and that gave me a different feeling. But I used to just use fork and knife all the time. Remember, using fork and knife is not calm. You know, you know, if you want to use fork and knife, that's fine. Okay. Um, but, you know, the sunnah of the two blocks of the wall that he would use his bare hand. That, that was a culture. But although in one hadith, it does not, the sunnah used knife to cut the that was there and that was used. So, but you know, traditionally, and you know, we use our hand. So she said, so brother, this is why the Prophet said, you wash your hands before eating. For nazafa. For nazafa. So, um, yeah, when in some parties, when you go, you are called to eat, right? And here we have to stand. And my dad came here and he saw it for the first time. He said that, the guests who are standing in the hall, around the dinner table, my dad said, they, they, they look like beggars to me. <laughs> you know, back in India, when we grew up, you know, we, if you call the, the, the guests to go and get your food, oh my God, you know, like a big insult. You know, you, you, you have to serve the, the guests. The, the guest. Yeah, and for that, we, 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 we used to have a specially made... Uh, I think yeah, yes, man, you know, yeah, that, right, so, so, you know, uh, so you go, you wash your hands there, and then start eating. But nowadays, if you go, the host comes and I please come, and you just go, take a plate and start eating. The Sula has said this is again, again, you wash your hands. So, brother, if you are in that place, don't, don't use your hand, use knife and fork. Because you know your hands are, are not clean. <laughs> so. And also, when you wash, also you need wet or you need to clean uh, dry with the. Uh, dry. dry. It, it is better to dry. I like to ask a question. Nowhere here does it say that you need to use soap. There's no mention of soap. Yeah. Does that mean using water by itself? Our dean says that that's enough. I used to think about that as well. Brother, the soap like we have right now was not found at the time of the Sukkot. So they would use dust. They would use dust to clean themselves with water. Like say, you have some dust on your body, when you have no soap, so you take dust, you, you will rub it on that the dust place, and then clean it. Huh? Yeah. So, so. Anyhow, next hadith brother is a very important hadith and if we all pay attention to this, maybe we are making the same mistake so we can stop doing it. Abdullah ibn Amr said that once we were going in a journey, Rasulullah remained behind. So he joined us while we were performing Guru for Asr Salah. Which was over, meaning the Maghrib Salah had come very close. So we were over it and we were passing wet hands over our feet, not washing them thoroughly. So he, he addressed us in a loud voice. And he said, Save your heels from the fire. Why do you do this? That save your heels from hellfire. Meaning, what are you doing? Take your time. Make food properly. You are not washing your feet properly. You are just passing wet hands over your feet. No, you have to wash it. I mean, you don't have to do masa. It's not like, like you have to do masa. You're passing your wet hands over your feet. No, you have to wash it. 
talks to do. Allah then we have to wash it. He said the Sudan bathes it in time. Use bathes it in white bathes. There are few lessons with it. Number one lesson with it. And if you look at that, why do they say that the Asr Salah had come close? Who are you? The Muslims. So it means that Sahaba generally used to pray Salah every first Salah and at, at, at its earliest time. Yeah, earliest time. Okay. That Salah time has come. The first thing that they will do is they will drop, drop everything that they were doing and pray Salah. Why? Because the Sulah has said on Hadith that the Afzal, the Afzal, the best Amal is to pray Salah at its earliest time. Do not delay it. Because something might come up and you will get, you get busy and um, you might forget. So, but at some time, in, there are some instances where Sahaba delayed, right? and this is one of them. They delayed. Now, Ibn Hajar Allah have quoted some Ramayat to show the reason why they delayed it. Because they will not do this intentionally, right? Because they were on a journey, they could have stopped anywhere. But they delayed it. You know why? They were they were looking for what? You are we we'll learn about the uh, the masail of uh, them. And the masail and the masail of them, whom the laws of them, you are not allowed to do them without searching for water. You can delay salah if you don't have water. Delay. Maybe till the very end time of that salah. But keep on looking for water. If you get water, then make good with water, you cannot do them. So Sahaba, they were going through desert. So they delayed it because some of the Sahaba knew that that path that they were walking on, they knew that after a few miles there is a village and there is this well and we can get water from there. So they delayed it. So do not think that Sahaba used to delay uh, praying Salah uh, intentionally or this was the general uh, general uh, uh, habit. No, this is an exception. So we should rather try to pray Salah at its earliest time. Uh, like you are traveling in uh, rest areas far away, you are, either you take water with you or yes, yes. Or wait until rest yeah, area. Yeah. Uh, wait instead, until of doing, instead of doing them. them. No, you should not be them. You should look for water. And then Salah will learn the Masala of them. And that searching for water is important. It is not that you know, say, uh, wait, you know, there is no water, let's make them. Yeah. And <laughs> 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 this also mentioned as well. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In the Salah, 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 these days, some of us, for some reason, they, we feel shy in washing our feet uh, at our workplace or when you are let's say, traveling. Right? So, if it is so that the what you do is that you can wear leather socks. <coughs> leather socks. Because if you put leather socks on in the morning with wudu, then for 24 hours, Right? All you have to do is, each time you make wudu, you do masa over your leather socks. There's no need to uh, watch. Because you are wearing leather socks. And if you are traveling, you are a musafir, you can do masa over leather socks for three days. If you are mukim, one day. If you are musafir, three days. But you have to keep the socks on. You have to keep the socks on. Once you take them off, <laughs> then, then you have to make wudu. Now, what is wrong is to make masa over your shoes. Some people that do masa over their shoes. The, the interesting part is that the scholars differ on one issue. That is, that you can you do masa over regular socks, meaning socks that are not made of leather, right? So Imam Hazrat Qazawi, Yusuf Qazawi and others, they, they have said yes, you can do masa even over leather socks. Non-leather socks. 
some scholars say no, no, it has to be that. So, so that is a difference between scholars. Okay? In that. If you ask me, brother, it has to be that, to be honest. But some scholars say, no, 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 but no scholar would say that you can do masa over and wear shoes. <laughs> no, no. But some people I see that they do masa over their over the shoes. And they say, Allah Kareem. But this is wrong. You are taking the Sharia of Allah and saying Allah is Kareem. So you cannot take masa over shoes. Now whether you are wearing leather socks or non leather socks, as I said, leather is Right? The more Remember, brothers and sisters, you shoes. No, no. Shoes are shoes. Whether they're leather or shoes. Or you have something on it. Right? Yes. Now, remember one thing, brothers. In Ibadah, in Ibadah, you should choose that opinion, to that opinion, which is close to be free from mistakes. Do not look for opinion that is easy. In Ibadah, if you have to choose that opinion of scholar, that is Ahwal. You say, everything Ahwal. Ahwal means most likely free from mistakes. Okay. So, uh, you know, and, this, and look at the last part of this of this uh, hadith. And which Rasulullah says, save your heel from the fire. Okay? <coughs> because Rasulullah saw the Sahaba were not washing their heel. So, but here was the, your, your feet. If you are making masa over your shoes, you know, it is not part of our being to do so. Your whole salah is based. So this is something that, that, that we need to... <laughs> brother, in Tamili, the one that is his brother, very funny brother, he is like 95 years old now, right now. His name is... Karnal? 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 He was in the Indian army during the time of British. So, yeah, I forgot a lot. So, you know, he is a very blunt man, very, he's a funny guy, but when he gets mad, he gets pure army colour, you know. He doesn't care what he's saying, he's a blunt. So, one time, when he went into Jamaat for, he was in Jamaat for like 40 So, what it was that one time, he came to US, and he was traveling to the Jamaat. <laughs> he stopped at the restaurant mm -hmm. and he was making wood. He put his leg in the sink and it was washed. And he was washing it thoroughly. One white guy was standing behind him. <laughs> he was watching him, what he was doing. And then when he saw that this Marinia is like taking too much of time, he said, Man, what are you doing? You put them to wash your feet. So much. Colonel Sahab stopped and looked at him. He said, look at my feet. My feet is more clean than your face. <laughs> I've watched it at least five times. How many times did you wash your face? <laughs> so that was his blood girl saying it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so this is the hadith of washing your feet properly. Now, next hadith, yeah, next hadith is uh, Madmada. Madmada, brother, means to gargle your mouth. Now, to gargle your mouth is important because if you have any food, Right? Any particle of food in your mouth. And you are praying salah with the food in your mouth. In Islam, it is considered to be a big insult to Allah. Okay? So you have to thoroughly clean your mouth before you pray salah. So magmada or gargling your mouth, rinsing your mouth, is called magmada, is a part of our of our wudu, right? So we have to, now this hadith stream is the same hadith that we read a few hadiths in And this says that he did madmada, he read his mouth, right? So madmada is a part of wudu, but remember it is sunnah, not wajib of 
Okay? But we have to. Now, if you have eaten anything that has bad smell, yeah. yeah, anything bad, right? That has a smell. Okay? And now you are in Hudu. You are in Hudu, right? But you ate something that has bad smell. So it is advisable to go and goggle your mouth before you say Allah. Okay? Now here it is something that smells good, right? Like biryani or korma or something. Like that. And, and, and you know it smells good. So a little bit of, of gargling is good enough. But anything that smells bad before seeing Allah who comes to the screen, either do this far or brush your teeth before seeing Allah. This is very important. In fact, I'm, for, I'm forgetting that saying of a Tawri, a Sahabi. Um, he said something to, to, to this effect that I, I prefer holding a burning pool in my mouth than seeing Allah while my mouth has some food. Now let's say you are drinking coke or chai, right? Or coffee, right? And so there's no need to gargle your mouth. Unless you feel that there is some smell. But if you have some food in your mouth, please. Just, you know, um, so this is the same thing, so I will not go, go over this because we have read this. This hadith is, is repeated by Imam Bukhari. Why? Because he wanted to write. This uh, lesson that Magmada or drinking your mouth is part of what? Now, this one is another uh, preparation of the same hadith uh, uh, from previous. If you say that people of Afan and Hudu, uh, so Rasulullah said that. Uh, now, the reason why he, he mentioned it here, brother, perf perform a uh, preparation perfectly and thoroughly for Abu Qasim. That's the reason why he, Abu Qasim is the kunniyat of Rasulullah. So if you notice, this kunniyat is used for the first time in Sri Bukhari. Abu Qasim. So, this was, so that's why Imam Bukhari Allah quoted this hadith. That Abu Qasim Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the kunniyat is like, um, if you have a son or a daughter, you are called Kuna, like your, your name is Bashir. Right? Now, What's the name of your child? Abdul Rahman. So I can say Abu Abdul Rahman, father of Abdul Rahman. Abu is father. So Abu Qasim is a sometimes Kurniyat uh, has nothing to do with your child's name. Sometimes if, if there is a sifa, that there is, a, yeah, there is a, a quality that you have, like Abu Turab, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah, Abu Turab means that Rasulullah <laughs> saw. Um, who was sleeping without a shirt and it was, uh, it was uh, hot and he was sleeping in the masjid so when the Suda went he quickly got up and he reached out to his shirt put it on when he was putting on the Suda saw that there was so much dust on his back so out of love the Suda said oh Abu Turab <laughs> so then that became his school media now he said Abu Turab Turab is dust a man with dust the said that out of love, right? Now, Abu Huraira. Huraira means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so one time, uh, Abu Huraira, who had a cat, went and climbed a tree. And Abu Huraira was trying to get his cat back. So he, he was saying, oh, you know, like, come, come, come. So Rasulullah happened to pass by. Rasulullah liked this. That an old man is just trying to get his Cat back, so Rasulullah at that time called him Abu Huraira, a man with a cat. So his name became Abu Huraira now. Everybody knows him as Abu Huraira, otherwise, that is not name. Now, sometimes we have a bad quality, like Mujahid. Mm. He, he, he is like ignorant, deliberately ignorant. Jahad means ignorant. And ignorance can be ignorance about Allah Rasul. So Rasulullah is the body of Abu Jaya. Abu is like Yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Abu, father, like. Yeah. So you, 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 if you have a sifat, good or bad, sometimes you get that to me. Yeah, Rasulullah has a son who passed away, 
of you know, the Allah, the, the fridge. So that was what is called Ahlul Qasim. So Imam Muhammad Rahmatullah quoted this hadith because it's the first time uh, that Bukhari Shri Rasulullah Sunni has been seen in a hadith. So Ahlul Qasim. So same thing. Now the last hadith to be uh, is this uh, So I will stop the hadith class here because this will take some time. Remember, we stopped at what? One six six four. Because today we have the buyer of Uba for Tishra, and he should talk and a few minutes about Tishra. So inshallah we will. Um, but if, you have, if anybody has questions, please ask me after this class. Okay? So we want the Tishri class to go as, as long as we can because that is the main purpose. Now, the bio of Abu Bakr, today we will start with Hijra. Now, remember, every Nabi made Hijra. Some, some Nabi made Hijra for a short while. Some Nabi made Hijrat for the rest of their lives. For example, Abu Ibrahim al Islam. Ibrahim al Islam was born out in where? Iraq. In Iraq. He was ordered by Allah to go where? Palestine. To Palestine. From there to Mecca. He was making Hijrat. But each of his Hijrat was not for good. Right? He went to Philistine, from Philistine he came to Makkah, in Makkah he left Hajra and Ismail, went back to Philistine, uh, to, Philistine to Sarah and, and his half, then to Iraq. He was roaming around, you could say. You know, he could work. Now, he did that with the permission from Allah. Allah ordered him to go. Right? So, every, the only prophet that made, that tried to make Hijrat, Without getting permission, was Yunus al right? And we'll talk about it. It was not his mistake. We don't think that he made a mistake. We shall talk about it. Here, Rasulullah Hasanam made Hijrah to to Madina Okay. Now remember that in the tenth year of Hijri, right? Is the the eleventh of eleventh year of Hijrah? Eleventh year of Nubuwa. Sorry, not. 11 year of Nubuwa, first group of people from Medina became Muslim. When they came for Hajj, right, they were approved by Abu Bakr and Rasulullah Sallam. They took bayat on the hand of Rasulullah Sallam. This is called Bayatul Uqba al Ula, the first one, the three. First one. How many people made bayat there? Six. Six. Right. So they went back. said, okay, when you go back, call the rest of the people to Islam. Let's see how many. Next year, the Hajj time came. Remember, the ladies will make Hajj, but the wrong way. So they came, 12 people this time. Made. Third year, 17. So when 72 people became Muslim, now the Sunnah said that, you know what, you go home. And call people to Islam. So, Sahaba said, O Prophet of Allah, here people are giving hard time. These people are, are, are no good. <laughs> you come to Madina, you know, we will sacrifice everything for you. You come, you, you, you test us. You know, we will never treat you like these people are treating you. So, Rasulullah said, Okay, for that I have to wait. If Allah gives me permission, then I will come. So those people said that, O Prophet of Allah, can you? In the meantime, can you send a Sahabi from Makkah, a senior Sahabi, who could teach us about religion? Ujmari Sahab, who was sent? He is called the Mualim of Madina. Musaab ibn Muhammad. He was a young Sahabi. He did such a wonderful job that by the time the Sultan went to Madina, people had have, 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 were willing to welcome him. So he went there and he spent every day, every day calling people to Islam. So Christians, Jews, Mushrikeen, Muslim will go and he will be Islam. He was like paving the way for Rasulullah to come. 
So he's called the Muallim of Medina, the teacher of Medina. Yeah, so he, now what it was that every Sahabi had left for Medina. Two prominent Sahaba have not, not left Ali and Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr and Ali. Two, have, two prominent Sahaba have not left. The rest of them have left. Umar had left, Uthman, everybody had left. Abu Bakr and Ali had not left. So there were few other Sahaba who were not that senior, but they could not leave because of reasons. Right. Some female Sahabia could not leave. Right. Even Rasulullah's daughter Zen, who was married to wife, she could not leave because her husband did not allow her to leave. When she eventually did, right, she was killed. You know, remember she was pregnant and Abu uh, Jahl, uh, she was feared that in her stomach and she died. So, what happened was that everybody had left her except Abu Jahl. Now, Abu Bakr, what he did was, he knew that the Sahaba had left for Medina, pretty soon, one day, Jibreel will come with her. Hukum from Allah that Rasulullah should leave. So what Abu Bakr did now, brother, this is his understanding of the Google. What he did was that he hired a guy. And before hiring him, he took a pledge from him. That this deal between you and me would be confidential. You will not tell anybody where I am going. Now those Arabs were at that time, considered lying as the worst crime. Yeah. This is why Rasulullah Rasul said, I cannot believe that a Muslim could lie. Yeah. So, he kept that guy. He paid him up front. He said, here's the your money. Right? When time will come, I will just come to you and I'll ask you to come with me. So, you cannot ask me questions. You cannot go, it's night time, I cannot go. So that guy said yes, between you and me, nobody will know. Abu Bakr, what he did was that he had prepared two things, also these candles, two candles. He had prepared, right? And he told his daughter Asma and Aisha. The daughter, you know, a time is going to come and I will give you a very short notice. So you have to prepare little food and some clothes or some you know, so he had made all these arrangements. Right. So each day Rasulullah and Abu Bakr will have a meeting. Right. So the Wahi did not come for a long time. One day Wahi came. And when this Wahi came, it was late at night. He really came late at night. Right. And he said to Rasulullah that you should go to Madina. So Rasulullah went to go to Madina. Uh, Jibreel said, right now. In the middle of the night, right now. So Rasulullah said, right now? Okay. Rasulullah Sallam left his house, went to Abu house. He knocked the door at the, at the middle of the night. Later on, Abu Bakr said that when I heard that knock, I jumped from my bed. I knew something important had been made and the person who was knocking my door is nobody but Rasulullah I opened the door and I saw Rasulullah Sallam standing. I said, what is the Rasulullah said only one word. Rasulullah said, al tijra And in response, Abu Bakr used only one word. And he was, As-Suhba, Ya Rasulullah, Rasulullah, can I accompany you? So he said, al tijra Abu Bakr said, As-Suhba, Rasulullah, not yes, you will go. For the rest of his life, Abu Bakr always took pride in this. That Allah chose me among all the people to accompany his Rasulullah on this important, maybe the most important event in the life of Rasulullah from Makkah to Umar. So he went straight to the guide, not his door, he said, Time has come, come on. That person came right away to Abu Bakr's house. Those two camels were ready, and, and then Abu Bakr woke up his daughter Asma and Aisha. 
So they are more quickly prepared whatever you can have to go right now. They prepare whatever the little zat they can. Rasul uh, put the stuff on the camel, and here in a matter of few minutes, Rasulullah and Abu Bakr were off to. So this is how that visit took place. Here, what is written here is saying that this journey was the best event in the life of Abu Bakr Now, there are many more details to the Hijrat that has nothing to do with Abu Bakr Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sunnah had to give the Imam to back, and the Sunnah had to come and invite the Sunnah and others. The Sunnah went through them, you know. They could not see the school of the school of the school of the school the school of 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 the that of the school of the school that the school of the the people realized that you know Rasulullah had left, they became so furious that uh, an alarm was made. An announcement was made that whoever will bring a Sunnah to them dead or alive, he will get 100 camels in reward. So many people went this. So here Rasulullah felt that people will be after him. So Rasulullah went and took refuge in that cave. Right? But did, did you ever thought of the, where did the camels go? Where did the camels go? They did not go in the cave. They got to climb the mountain. Where did the camel go? Yeah. Abu Bakr said to the guide, you take camels wherever you want to. Right? So, yeah? Yeah, but he just left. Where? He said, come to, come to us after a couple of days, whatever. Whatever he had to do. So those camels Now, brother, Abu Bakr and Rasulullah are in that cave. Okay. Now, there are some fixtures stories here that a pigeon came and made a nest and put the uh, eggs and all that. All the historians have heard that. There are such stories that which are very famous, right? But in the Muhammadin, oh, ulama and historians have said well, nothing of that part. They were in that uh, cave when that famous incident happened that people came searching for Rasulullah and Abu Bakr. And, uh, and uh, Abu Bakr saw the feet of those mushrikeen coming right there at the mouth of that cave. At that time, he started sweating. Right? Later on, his, Abu Bakr said to his people, he said, don't think that I was sweating because I was fearing over my life. I was fearing over Rasulullah because I knew that the person who is with me is Rasulullah. If these people will catch him and Rasulullah will kill him, Khatim Nabi is lost. No Nabi will come after him. So the rest of the world will be left into Kufranship. And you and I brother would not have any Muslim. You know, Islam would not have reached us. Had Muslim found us to lost in that time. It could be in Makkah itself, right? And he would pray to Allah. Why he has to take all the hazards and efforts to fight for the people? Like some people say, everything is done by Dua. Dua is done by Dua. You can probably bark it here. Here, Allah has ordered us to do this. Now, here, this was the order from Allah. Rasulullah did not do it. Order came, do this. This is why Rasulullah did not do this on his own. When the order comes, they have to do it. And the Bible is saying that the Rasulullah was just scared him up and kept on going down. Dua. 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 That is the game that is from us. Anyhow, so at that time, my dear brother and sister, I was whispered something in the ear of Rasulullah. And Rasulullah said one thing. What is that? La Tahzan in the Allah Allah is Another thing that Allah always took pride in what Allah said in the Quran. This is Surah 
طبعا طبعا لان الله معنا الله عايز بتحس بتحس مين ابو بكر رسول الله عند ابو بكر في سيد الله سيد عند بيت رسول الله عند ابو بكر في سيد this is the biggest honor ever for me ان الله معنا those people came and they left Then after a day or two, uh, when the camels came back, the guy came back, I would help him, Rasulullah Sallam, who was sitting towards Madina. The Jala, the, the, the nest, Allah was sitting on Maya, from Allah, who is a big muhaqqit, a very, he researched a lot. He said, I found out that both things are all mahu. You know, these things, it gets famous very, My cookies and my auntie, you know, they, they would they call me, they would never be, they always told me that. So I would used to believe that this is happening. But Allah Mashiri, I mean, Allah is saying, he said, yani, he took those I, 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 I mean, they're asked from Ramayah. But he said, no, they're all wrong. I mean, there's no, yeah. So he went and he, and they went to um, Marina Dhamma. Okay. So now here he went to Madinah Mughawra and my dear brothers and sisters, let me tell you one last thing before uh, we talk about his battle uh, next week and that is Abu Bakr when they reached Madinah Mughawra <laughs> this is another thing very very fascinating what it was that many people have never seen Rasulullah in Madinah Mughawra so when they reached Madinah Remember first they stopped at, at Kuba, at Kuba last week. From Kuba, when they were going to Madinah Munawwara, nowadays if you go by, 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 by car, it takes maybe 10-15 minutes. Uh, that time it will take at least, you know, maybe 4-5 hours. So, he, what he did was he stopped. The Sultan and Abu stopped, they stopped at the, uh, under the shade of a tree. So now here there is the group of Sahaba standing maybe several hundred feet away, right? And they could not know if this is Rasulullah Sallam and Abu Bakr. Now Abu Bakr and Rasulullah Sallam is under the shade of the, the tree anticipating people to come to them. So that was this kind of silence. So what Abu Bakr did was, was something very intelligent. What he did was, he took a piece of cloth, right? And he put that piece of cloth over the head of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, shielding him from sun. This way he gave a, a sign that he is Rasulullah, come to him. So people started running towards him from that. And then there, that happened, Tala al-Badru alayna min faniyyati wadai. Then girls started singing Tala al-Badru alayna. And Rasulullah said, oh, well, let these girls sing. You know, today they are happy that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So here also Rasulullah uh, Bakr uh, showed uh, how he cared for Rasulullah Next week we will we'll learn about it, the battle that he participated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help in this time. Subhanallah wa alhamdi subhanahu wa ta'ala wa alhamdi. Nashadu wa ta'ala wa alhamdi. Nashadu wa ta'ala wa Love